The 5G Alliance for Connected Industries and Automation, or 5G ACIA, was founded last April as a global forum to discuss relevant uh, technical, regulatory, and business aspects, and bringing all of the relevant stakeholders of industry together uh, to discuss how 5G will work for them. The chairman of that is Andreas Muller, who is also the head of communications and network technology uh, in the corporate research department of Robert Bosch GmbH in Stuttgart, Germany. Uh, he's here to join with us today to discuss the 5G ACIA. Uh, tell us more about the association, tell the organization, how is, it, how is it working and what are the goals? Yeah, thanks. So we established 5G ACIA, as I said, in April last year. Um, and we did this because we see that there's a lot of potential behind 5G in the manufacturing industry. So we see that 5G will become you know, a key enabler for the factories of the future and we always say it will be the central nervous system of the factory of the future. But it's a long way to go, so in order to make it happen and to become reality, so we need this close collaboration between all relevant stakeholders. So it's the classical telecom industry, the ICT industry, but it's also what we call the OT industry, so the operational technology industry. And you have to come together and to yeah, shape the vision together. So you have to have a common understanding of use cases, requirements uh, of technology, building blocks that may help um, achieve your goals. And that's what you're doing in 5G ACI. And the time to do that is now, rather than when, when the technology is further down the track. Well, Get of it? course, yeah, because we have to, I mean, influence also the 5G standardization, for example, in the right way, so that whatever comes out of 3 for example, fits to our requirements and needs. Yeah. And that's why it's now the right time. It's actually already a bit late, I would say, but I think it's just caught the train on the last minute, and now we're on a good way to make the things become reality. So, and also on the train with you is a company like Huawei. Uh, how, how can they support the goals of the HCIA? Obviously through engagement and dialogue, but what else do they need to do? I mean, of course, it's very important to have players like Huawei, which are leading the technology, driving the technology. And uh, I mean, Huawei is also very much engaged in 5G, ACIA, member of the board, uh, for chairing a working group and so on. And they can bring, of bring in, of course, all the expertise uh, that is needed from the ICT industry. But it alone is also not sufficient, so we also need the end users, the industrial automation companies and so on. And then with this joint discussions, we hopefully can create something that, that serves the needs of the manufacturing industry. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in dialogue with other organizations, not just the vendors, not just the industrial organizations, but the, the GIO as well. Uh, how's that working and what's, the, what's the, the, the commonality there? How is that working together with the 5G ACIA? Yeah, so the GIO, the Global Industry Organizations Initiative, is a new initiative that has been also launched by or started by Huawei. And the idea is to bring different organizations together, so different industrial alliances like 5G ACIA, but also the 5G Automotive Association, 5G AA, for example, Etsy and different players and uh, from my perspective it's a good tool basically to have an exchange and to uh, yeah, improve the collaboration between the different organizations because also 5G ACI we are looking at how we can use and optimize 5G for the manufacturing industry sure. but it's just one building block again in the overall picture so it's all about digitalization and making the industry in our case uh, digital but it's then also if, if it's a bigger picture in mind for the automotive industry the same story and for other verticals as well. So it's important that everything fits together so that there are no white, white gaps basically that are missed and also that duplicate work is avoided for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So therefore it's from my perspective really a very good network of opportunities to understand what others are doing, maybe to also try to establish a common language, a common understanding on a broader level. So we are doing this in 5G SIA with a very clear focus and now with the GIO it's expanding a bit and it's the bigger picture mind. No, it makes perfect sense. So Huawei is a, a founding member of this and, and on the board. But what are the contribution uh, is it making to, to the 5G ACIA's work? Well, I would say Huawei is very active and is contributing basically in all activities that we have. And uh, I mean, we are just discussing use cases requirements, for example, but many players, especially from the OT industry, are not HPP members, for example. Right, right, example. Right. And of course, players like Huawei, which have a very strong say and uh, presence in the GPP, so they may help them to prepare contributions out of the discussions that we have in 5G ACIA, bring it to 3GBP and then make sure that it's considered in standardization, for example. Mm -hmm. But it's also beyond that, so Huawei did some activities on the radio channel uh, propagation, for example, so they did some channel measurements and we collected those measurements from different players. So they come up with some channel models and the channel model in a factory is something that is rarely understood so far. Mm -hmm. And it's the basis for everything else. So we have to have a good understanding of that so that we can optimize the system, that we can investigate the performance and so on. 
these are just some selective examples of how Huawei contributes to the uh, success of our chase area. Mm. Andres, thank you so much for giving us your time today. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Cheers. Cheers.